Good morning on a rainy and miserable Friday morning in Leeds. Winter is definitely coming. However, I bang on a lot about accompaniment playing, um, both recently uh, on my YouTube videos and generally and in private lessons because it's so important. If you look at how much time you spend soloing, it's such a small amount of time. It might be like 10 or 15%, if that. So what the hell is a harmonica player doing standing around on stage for the other 85% of the time that they're not playing? Well, you're accompanying. You're being um, what they traditionally call a sideman. I suppose side person would be more appropriate these days. But you're an accompaniment player. You're not the star of the show. You're there to make the music sound better than it would without you. That's the trick. So, um, I have been meaning for a while to put together sort of hints and tips for accompaniment, and I have done that to some extent in my Playing Along to Non-Blues uh, Chord Changes series, which is available on Patreon. But um, I've come across a, um, a little article here on Substack by a player I'm ashamed to admit I've never heard of before called Shane Sager, and he has written a piece here. I'll put the link to this in the description. Substack asks for an email address, and then um, it'll ask you if you want to pledge some money to Shane. You don't have to pledge any money, um, but you do need to surrender your email address if you want to read this thing. I recommend that you do, and I recommend that you chuck Shane a quid or two, because this is Excellent what he's written here. The Ten Commandments of um, Accompaniment Playing. I'm not, I'm not just going to verbatim him, um, rehash what he's put here, but I am going to pull out some, some interesting things that I think are pretty cool. So excuse me, I'm looking down here and reading it on my iPad. No, <laughs> he's really good. Know thy instrument, know thyself. What he's talking about in this section is having command of the skills, techniques, and uh, musical ideas that you can contribute, okay? The more techniques you know, the more options you have when it comes to presenting a piece of music. Being professional. Now, Usually being professional means you get paid for something, but that's not necessarily, <coughs> excuse me, the case in harmonica land. But it just means turning up on time, being presentable, learning your parts, accepting criticism, doing what you're asked to do, right? You're there for, for somebody else. It's their gig. You're there to help them out. And really, whatever they say goes, okay? So you've got to really... Um, Check your ego at the door. And I think that's a good, healthy thing for everyone to do, to be honest. Um, dynamics. I bleed on about dynamics all the time. Um, at its simplest, you can think of dynamics as the, the distance between your quietest notes and your loudest notes. It's astonishing how much of a positive effect you can create just by varying your volume. It makes the music sound more emotional. It catches the ear more. Anything that's varied is more interesting than something that's just going right? And that ties into another point that Sean is making here about embracing space, okay? Here's a harsh truth, nobody and I mean nobody, needs a harmonica player. You can play songs without harmonica in them. You can sing songs without harmonica in them, obviously. If you're fortunate enough to have someone want you to play with them, and they, you know, respect your playing enough to, to want you to do it, that's a very, very cool thing, right? We don't want to piss them off, because we are, at the end of the day, surplus to requirements. So... Um, dynamics and space. You're not the star of the show. 
right? You're not. You're there to add spice, to add flavour, to add colours and textures. And if that means you play nothing in the whole song and then just do sort of a 20-minute solo somewhere, that's what it means. If it means all you're doing in a song is providing a little bit of rhythmic accompaniment, then that's what it means, okay? You're not here to show off. Check your ego, right? Um, and also in here, actually, there's a, um, a very interesting quote from Sonny Boy Williamson too, which I haven't heard before. Um, then he said he would like, uh, when he plays, he would leave enough space to be able to snap his fingers in between his phrases. Which is pretty cool, right? Because he does do that. Um, and if you listen to, um, if you can get hold of some of Sonny Boy's um, solo playing where he's unaccompanied, his command of time is astonishing and he's not playing much. It's really, really cool. Rhythmic support. Very, very interesting phrase from Sean here. I'll just read it. No matter which instrument you play, be it guitar, saxophone, harmonica, whatever, everything in music is at its core a drum. That's interesting. He's talking about rhythm. He, something else that I say to people constantly is that rhythm timing is the most important thing in music you can play a wrong note and get away with it the note is there and gone okay it's, it's forgotten if you break the rhythm that's when the train comes off the tracks right you've lost it there's no more song if you if you come out of time everything's broken if you're playing with other people, which you would be if you're accompanying, they're going to look at you and go, what the hell are you doing? You're, you're breaking this, okay? So when you're chording or when you're playing little rhythmic fills, thinking about it like a drum is really important. I usually tell people to think if they're chording more as a percussion thing, um, but I never really put that much thought into it until I read Shane's point there and I really thought that he's right. You've got your shuffle rhythm, right? In a blues. That's what the drums are doing. When we're chording over that, oh God, would you believe I haven't even got a harmonic in front of me? Two seconds, thank you. G harp, right? The notes are there, but then that's not what you're playing. You're playing the rhythm. that you're playing. So you're locking in with the drums. People might not actually realize it, especially if they haven't, they're haven't. they not musicians or they haven't thought a lot about music, but it's the rhythm that sells the song. It Honestly, it's so important. You could be doing that chording thing. You could be doing a little, excuse me, I'll do it in time. You, you are playing notes that will match with the rest of the band, but it's the rhythm. It's the rhythm that you're selling. It's the rhythm that is selling the song. Constructive criticism, I sort of alluded to this before. You're there to do what you're told as an accompanist. If the person running the show doesn't like what you're doing, he's going to get rid of you. You need to take criticism. That's part of being a professional as well. If he says, no, don't like that there, don't play it there. Don't say, I'm a harmonica player. I know what's what. It's not your position. If you want to do that, you have to start your own band. And then you can tell people what to do. And you'll probably be asked for it as well. Checking your ego, like we said before. Check it at the door because if you are precious about this stuff, you are going to find you're on a road to misery. Absolutely. So there you go. There's loads more in here. I'm deliberately not sort of verbatim spitting this out. But it's a really interesting article. It's given me a lot of food for thought and whenever I come back to uh, looking at some sort of less, more lesson type material on um, accompaniment, I will certainly be referring back to this. Uh, I hope that's been helpful. Do read Shane's Substack. I'm going to go and try and find some examples of Shane playing now. And here's an interesting thing. I know he's a good player. I can tell he's a good player because he's written intelligently about playing. So anyway, if I find some links, I'll put those in the description as well. Thank you very much 
for watching accompaniment playing is so much fun, man. It really is. And, actually, I'm doing it tonight at the Polish Centre uh, in Chapel Allerton in Leeds with Ben Slack. So, if you're local and you want to see it in action, we've only got a short set, though. I think it's probably about half an hour less than that. Plug the Patreon again. More content coming soon for that. And Life, Love and Blues Harmonica Licks will be back on Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everyone.